ourselves to that divine wisdom and intelligence. We ask for the guidance that we speak and listen with that compassion, with that divine love, that we realize that we are all here together as individuals, some with our own agendas, but we live in one community. And so we ask God for that, that love. Just breathe in love. We are here to do the best we can for this community, to take care of the needs of all. And with that divine love and that divine wisdom, we are so grateful. We take it in and we ask that we are guided in every step of our way this evening. And we say, thank you, God. So it is. And in wisdom, we participate in making it so. Amen. Please face the flag. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you, Reverend Landry. <coughs> the minutes from the January 22nd, 2015 uh, meeting has, have been received and they'll stand approved. There's no objections. We're now at resolutions and special recognitions. Mayor, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, if I could ask Kenny Anderson to come forward. We have a young Kathy uh, Youth of the Month to recognize tonight. And if y'all would come forward too, please. Kenny, tell us who we have. Thank you, Mayor. If my uh, Kathy committee would come forward. Mayor, tonight we have, uh, and the council and audience, we have Katie, Katie Shattuck, who is our 2015 February CAFE Star 99.1 Young Citizen. Um, just a little bit about Katie. She's a 2015 graduating senior from Huntsville High School. She's a member of the Honor Society. She's been a tutor at the James Lane Boys and Girls Club for the last seven years. And she and her team have logged almost 750 hours of tutorial services. That is absolutely outstanding. She has chaired interfaith panels to promote understanding among students. And she has participated in mission trips to the Choctaw Reservation, as well as to Mexico to provide people with a better quality of life. Ladies and gentlemen, the February 2015 CAFE Star 99.1 Young Citizen, Katie Shattuck. And Sarah Crock with the Human Relations Commission has a short presentation. Katie, we are just so proud of you and uh, you know, just thrilled. And you've got so much wonderful support out in the audience. We're thrilled that everybody could come out. We've got a certificate here for you tonight, and it says CAFI Star 99.1 and the Human Relations Commission of the City of Huntsville is proud to honor Katie Shattuck as the CAFI Star 99.1 Young Citizen of the Month. And it's signed by Mayor Battle, uh, <coughs> me, Kenny Anderson, Dr. Harry Hobbs, and... Um, <laughs> Ilya Reznikov from Star 99.1. And we're really proud to present this to you. And, and we also have some other stuff for you. Uh, <laughs> you know, you have such an exciting life as you go about being a servant leader and serving others. So we want to give you a couple items as you go about doing that. Every now and then take a coffee break. Okay. <laughs> Protect yourself from the weather. Always take notes. <laughs> and don't spend this in one place. <laughs> Thank you. And Katie, I, I, I think you brought your own crowd with you. You have your own, <laughs> you have your own paparazzi out here with you. But we want to give you a coin from the city and say thank you for being such a great influence on this city and making this city such a shining star. So thank, thank you, you very much. 
picture time. You have five cameras. <laughs> You'll get one good picture, I promise you. Thank you. Katie, thank you very much and congratulations. Uh, we also like to ask Coach Patterson to come up. Coach has uh, some youth that he wants to honor and uh, Coach Eric Keho Co Kohu, sorry. If you would come up, Coach, uh, these are all state football players from Madison Academy who have again won their third executive, third consecutive state championship, which I think is a great thing. And coach, do you want to introduce your players? Because you can introduce them better than anybody, even though you did school me on the names and everything. You can introduce and you can talk about these guys. And please bring bring them up and uh, let's let's honor them. Absolutely. Thank you, Mayor Battle. Uh, we'll start here uh, to my left here, uh, Malik Miller. Come on up. And carry on Johnson. Nathan Geis and John Kreider. And just briefly, uh, these guys represented us. They were first team all state in the state of Alabama. And they also had several honors. Carrion Johnson had multiple national uh, recognition awards, uh, being all American. John Kreider was an all American. Nathan Geis set uh, several state records this year, consecutive PATs and most PATs in a state championship game. Uh, Malik Miller has been our uh, leading running back. Uh, you Yard-wise, last couple of years, and has done an outstanding job uh, leading us. Carry on, Johnson recently is signed with uh, uh, Auburn University. Many of y'all have uh, watched that. We look for big things out of him and his future career collegiately and hopefully beyond. Uh, we just want to thank uh, Mayor Battle, Councilmen and Women, for allowing us uh, to be uh, recognized tonight, and uh, just we're honored to represent the city of uh, Huntsville. And these guys got to represent the city of Huntsville on that national stage uh, uh, playing on ESPN this year and they were as Mayor Battle said part of a three-year state championship three-peat and so really appreciate the accomplishments of these guys leading us this year thank you sir coach congratulations to your full team and guys if y'all would if you would come back I know everybody here wants to shake your hand and uh, and and see you and some people might even want to talk about changing your commitments and everything <laughs> but Please come through and congratulations on three great years. And one more thing, Mr. President, we do have in the audience today, we have some Cub Scouts here from Troop 361 at Holy Spirits. Uh, they are very great representatives of the cities and future leaders in this city, and our Cub Scouts would please stand. I understand from their parents that they have to go home after this, after being recognized, because they have to get homework done. Guys, thank y'all for coming and being part of our city today, and we want to say congratulations on, your, on what you're doing with the Cub Scouts and on your future leadership with us. Thank you for visiting with us today. Council members, we have no resolutions for adoption or presentation tonight. Uh, we have no special recognitions. I do have several announcements. 14A, the administration has asked us to consider it tonight by unanimous consent. 15X requires unanimous consent. And 16B1 has been deleted from the agenda. So that's 14A and 15X. We will need unanimous consent to vote on. 16B1 has been deleted. 
Uh, I'd like to ask, uh, there's a presentation from the administration on the old uh, Holiday Inn Hilton site, and I'm gonna ask Mr. Davis, Mr. Davis, if he, why don't we go ahead and do that presentation now? Mr. Davis, we decide to go ahead and do the presentation now. That way, uh, uh, constituents and citizens may will be able to comment at their time. And so, if you could uh, please uh, introduce your project and let us know what you're going to do. Sorry, council members. I thought we'd take those out of order. So <clears throat> tonight, we want to bring to you City Center at Big Spring. Uh, it's a mixed-use development in our downtown urban core. Uh, to give the council members a little background, uh, the city of Huntsville solic <coughs> solicited a request for proposals in June of 2014 uh, for the possible redevelopment of the former Holiday Inn property and the soon-to-be vacated Wh Williams Aquatic Center. Uh, the RFP required that a qualifying proposal must be of a mixed-use development format and that would provide an improved quality of life and overall economic development to our city. <coughs> we received numerous proposals. And upon evaluation of those proposals, uh, the city staff, along with a, a team of uh, downtown Huntsville Inc. officials, Chad Emerson, uh, we determined city, CRS City Center LLC proposal to provide the best positive impact <coughs> for our community. Uh, the project location, as I mentioned, is a, uh, a two-phased approach. That's what the RFP uh, submitted and allowed people to pr <coughs> submit proposals on. Uh, the phase one portion of the project would, would be the former Holiday Inn site. And as I mentioned, a phase two portion of the project, and I get into details of both these phases, uh, would be the Williams Aquatic Center. Uh, the city center at Big Springs is a proposed mixed phase, <coughs> mixed phased mixed use project. Uh, phase one would include 230 multifamily units, max, uh, with on-site management, Ur an urban style hotel with 150 rooms, 28,000 square feet of uh, retail and uh, currently sched schedules is 30,000 square feet of office space and, and that number could actually grow. Uh, phase two would require <coughs> a minimum of a hundred room second hotel and additional mixed use components to be determined by market demand which could include additional retail, restaurant, office uses. Uh, as I just mentioned, uh, phase one, uh, the city has guaranteed restaurants, retail, office and hospitality. This is the current proposed site layout of both the phase one and phase twos of the project. Uh, the areas that you see in blue are, <coughs> are mixed use uh, components. Uh, there would be a mix of office, retail, and uh, restaurants. <coughs> the yellow at the corner of uh, Williams, almost directly across from Thrasher Fountain, uh, would be the first hotel. And then the portion in red is uh, multifamily units, kind of standalone, and then a wrap around a uh, parking garage. Uh, to the bottom of the screen and to your left would be the phase two hotel and then the remaining balance between the phase one and the phase two hotel portion uh, would be the future addition on the phase two property. Uh, <coughs> I've highlighted as you're aware council has already previously uh, adopted a resolution and allowed us to be in construction on our downtown gateway project that's shown in dark gray that also includes connecting Davis Circle uh, to the current roundabout. So the roundabout would be complete. Uh, so it provides great circulation, not only for this project, but our downtown urban core to handle a mixed use development such as this. I uh, wanted to show you a few uh, project concepts of just kind of what the rendering of the proposed development would look like in scale. Uh, to the left, you can see I've labeled Big Spring Park. This would be Williams Avenue, kind of looking to the southeast. And this would be a view looking across from the VBC down Williams back towards uh, City Hall to the east, uh, back in towards our Twiggyham at the at the intersection there. I want to take a few moments tonight. We're proposing to, to bring you as a development agreement and a lease agreement for, for your consideration for adoption. I'll go over those terms. Uh, City Huntsville commitments. City Huntsville will perform the demolition and removal of the former Holiday Inn, including its foundations. Uh, we, we are started on that process. Uh, not so much to try to pressure you into approving this, but 
you know, the Holiday Inn closed many, many months ago. Uh, and whether we move forward or not, uh, we hope that you will. Uh, the best use of that property is go ahead and demo that, that, that structure from a safety and liability standpoint of the city. Uh, city of Huntsville will provide a phase one environmental report of the property. Uh, we completed that upon issuing the RFP uh, for the project. So that is complete. Uh, the city of Huntsville will perform landscape, hardscape, <coughs> and improve pedestrian connectivity within the city's existing rights of way that border the property. Uh, council members, you may remember when we built the embassy suites, we did those uh, streetscape improvements along that corridor. Uh, so there'll be very little improvements mm. uh, on both sides of the street in front of the embassy. Uh, the downtown gateway flanks the east side of the property and there's an already a hardscape landscape package in that project that is under construction. So the main portion of our, our, our hardscape and landscape improvements that would be a commitment to the city is mainly along Williams Avenue. The <coughs> city of Huntsville will continue our ongoing flood mitigation efforts along Fagan Creek. Uh, by extending our box culvert plan from the embassy suites to the downtown gateway project. Uh, some of you were on council when we did that project that we took <coughs> from Pinhook Creek along Fagan and, and put the box culvert in. And, and when we do that, it kind of collapses the, the floodplain in our downtown, which in increases the density and property and sales tax values in our downtown urban core. So we'll <coughs> we will pick that box culvert up where we stop back during the embassy suites project and take it to the downtown Harvard gateway project. So it will provide a connectivity link uh, from a pedestrian standpoint from the Twickenham Square Medical District into our downtown and VBC and also reduce some of the floodplain in our downtown core, not just for this property but surrounding properties. <coughs> City of Huntsville protections. Uh, on the phase one project site, which is the Holiday Inn site, we will maintain a 99-year lease. So we will maintain control of the property for the interests of our public. Uh, the City of Huntsville will have the approval rights of the hotel brand that will go on the phase one project site and phase two site. <coughs> the city of Huntsville and CRS City Center LLC will also mutually agree on the overall site design and the aesthetics and the character of the final design for the project. Uh, the city of Huntsville will also have approval rights on the transfer of this lease to any new ownership. So if CRS City Center LLC decided to sell their interest, the city of Huntsville and the city council would have the right to approve who that new ownership would be. <coughs> CRS City Center requirements. Uh, the developer will pay all annual taxes due that's generated from the development. This would include property tax, sales tax, ad valorem taxes. They will pay the city an annual lease for the phase one developer of $144,000 annually for that 99 year term. Uh, city Center for the phase two site has two options. They can pay the city a $60,000 annual lease for the 2.6 acre aquatic center property or they can purchase it outright for $1 million. And the way we come up with a million dollar price is amortization of, of the lease. Uh, <clears throat> and in that, that lease or that, that purchase, the city does have the right of first refusal to repurchase the site if the site's not developed in within 24 months and it would be for the million dollars that they would have paid us for. So there'll be no interest or, or gain by the developer of allowing the city to recoup that piece of property and control it. Additional city center requirements, uh, as I mentioned earlier before, uh, they must construct up to 230 multifamily units, provide a hotel, retail, office space in the phase one. <coughs> city center also agrees to construct one additional hotel and other mixed use components per market demand on the phase two property. <coughs> They'll construct all required surface and structure parking uh, within the project site. Um, this is a significant investment by the city center folk development team. Currently the structure parking is a six level garage. The city will have no money in that garage. City Center LLC must comply with prohibited use uh, list that is exhibit E in your development agreement package we brought to you for both phase one and phase two. So we've got many, many restricted uses that, that we don't think is conducive not only to our city but our downtown urban core. <coughs> As again, I want to kind of walk you through the, the phase two uh, project site because we have an existing city facility that's currently in use. Uh, again, it's the Williams Aquatic Center property. It's 2.6 acres. And it currently has the Scruggs Center and the Williams Aquatic Center. Uh, council members, in, in October of last year, you approved the capital budget plan that has the, a new aquatic center that <coughs> at our natatorium complex, complex. It also includes a hydrotherapy pool that's currently in the Williams Center. Design is underway and construction is slated to begin by the end of this year. 
Uh, all these new facilities will be located at the city's natatorium complex. This is a current layout that our facilities department along with John Hamilton has laid out with a consultant. This is designing uh, in the light blue shade, you'll see the new hydrotherapy pool. That pool will be a state-of-the-art uh, pool that will replace the Williams Aquatic Center and the services that we provide in, at that center. And in addition, of course, a, a new 50-meter pool uh, to go with our existing natatorium. <coughs> Phase two option, it allowed for two, two methods for the developer to exercise that option. Uh, the city will give rights to the to the developer to enter into that option no later than December 31st, 2016. That is the date we have determined for the Williams Center to be closed and the new center to be open to our public. A second option would allow city center to have early access to the phase two project with an approved plan that would allow the aquatic center to remain open and they would provide parking for our residents that, that access the aquatic center. <coughs> And I, I think this is a duplicate slide and I apologize. Um, the, the early option second phase or second option I mentioned of early access, what this will do and it's something that both the city and the developer wishes and hopes we can work out and we think we can, it would allow the project to be built in one phase. So we wouldn't have this first phase open and have a high pedestrian activity and then a large construction site going on adjacent at, at the aquatic center site. <coughs> this is something that uh, you know the mayor has been dedicated to and, and I commend him for. It's a project that uh, I think the community's tried to do something with for many, many years and try to find a funding source. Proceeds from the sale or lease of the aquatic center, either the $60,000 a year annual lease payment or the $1 million outright purchase, will be dedicated to the redevelopment of the council high school site. Um, <coughs> if the project goes in one phase, what we think we can do with that million dollar uh, purchase is to accelerate design plans working with alumni association to get a design complete one that the community accepts and then start a funding source to, to start building that early access so how would we do that circled in red is the aquatic center uh, to to the left is the hotel be wrapped in the corner I, I've kind of showed you a photo in the below screenshot of, of how that uh, hotel would look and then the back side of the hotel along Davis Circle would be providing the new temporary parking to allow uh, our citizen access to the aquatic center until the new one is open. <coughs> the construction schedule. Uh, should your approval occur tonight on this project, uh, final design plans will be completed by July. Uh, site work be would begin in August. Hotel construction would start going vertical sometime in October. Mixed use construction uh, would be in January. The multifamily will start in June. So they're trying, phasing this is a very tight site. Uh, there's many, many components just like Twickenham uh, where things have to kind of go in sequence to, to get it to come out of the ground. Parking deck construction would start late this year. <coughs> the first portion of the phase one project would be scheduled to open sometime in summer of 16, mainly being some of the mixed use components in the hotel. I'll take any questions the council may have. And one question keeps coming up on the price. Uh, uh, Mr. Davis, what were the three prices we were offered on the three proposals that we had? <laughs> they vary drastically. Uh, of the three best finalist proposals that we had, uh, one <coughs> proposal was for a dollar a year lease. Uh, the other one, I think the max was, was about 60000 a year. And then the, the city center group offered a uh, purchase price and we wanted to convert that to a lease. So we took their purchase price and converted it into a 20, what it amortized would be, and it come up to 144000 So that not only did they have the best design, they offered the best price yeah. to the public. I think their price was $2.4 million, and it, we figured a 6% return on that money, so 6% return was put us at 144000 a year. Is that yeah. right? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Council members, do you have questions for Mr. Davis? Mr. Klain. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the, the Phase two project? Um, I think you said that there's a possibility that there would be a hotel under the phase two. What is there a ballpark estimate as far as what the number of rooms would be? I know you talked about 150 for phase one. And I was wondering if you have a ballpark what we, phase two would be. Yes, we ha actually in the development agreement that you would approve, there's a hundred room minimum for phase two. Could certainly could be much more than that, but but is required for them to have a hundred room minimum. So if they exercise phase two, there has to be at least a hundred room hotel. Is that Correct. So the project, 
total build out, you'd have 250 rooms on the Holiday Inn site, and that, that about replaces the quantity of rooms we had yep. there, okay. but at a much higher standard. I see Miss Riles back there counting hotel rooms from the convention <laughs> visitors. But, but no, I think that's a, that on site <coughs> uh, is certainly something that's, uh, that's very important. Uh, going back to the option on phase two, is it, uh, and is it legally, I guess I'm understanding, is it an option or is it pretty much a, a go that they're gonna exercise phase two? It, it's an option. It, when, yeah. uh, you, if you approve this lease and, and development agreement tonight, uh, they have a certain time frame to do their due diligence. And within that due diligence, uh, they have a 90 day execution of, of a kind of a free look, you know, to review the environmental document to make sure that, you know, we've done what we said we would do, uh, demoing the, the aquatic center on time. And then once they exercise that option, uh, then they've got to make a choice either to lease or purchase. And the, uh, the new uh, facilities are being built at adjacent to the natatorium. Does that go ahead uh, regardless of what happens with phase two or whether Williams is part of the phase two project or not? Yes, you know, upon your approval of the contract, <coughs> phase one must be built. Uh, you will be guaranteed that. The no, I didn't mean that, I was talking about phase two. Oh. Uh, I mean the, I mean, could we hypothetically end up with the situation where phase two is not executed and we could have a Williams uh, Center remain and still a new facility at the natatorium? No, uh, what you would have, let's say that uh, CRS decided not to exercise phase two option, 2.6 acres. The aquatic center is, is going away. Uh, we, we have approved, we have an approved budget. We are under design with a brand new hydrotherapy pool. We want to consolidate those service, services. So we would more than likely put on an RFP for that 2.6 acres. So it's going to get redeveloped. Okay. I was just trying to find, you know, understand your methodology also uh and i thought i'd seen something in some plan somewhere in the past or maybe it was something that was mentioned in the newspaper but is there anything being done to narrow williams avenue or is that part of this we currently are working on a traffic study along williams uh, we will make some type of improvement to williams uh, to, to increase the connectivity between the vbc this development big spring park what that final layout will be will, will kind of be determined on the traffic study. We want to make sure that we still have circulation for the VBC and large events, okay. uh, but we also want to make it a very pedestrian friendly intersection there. That's gonna be a highly, you know, especially during conferences, you put two hotels plus the embassy, that pedestrian activity back and forth from the VBC is something very critical to the, to the project into our downtown. Okay. I just wondered if y'all might look at something like, uh, I know they're a crosswalk and maybe, uh, um, cobblestones or brick pavers or something on the road versus getting into narrowing. I saw that effect that was done in Greenville and yes. I know it's <coughs> supposed to make quote more vibrant, but at the same time it, it, it just seems to have a lot of traffic congestion and I guess I just have concern about the lane, and count, getting count, into the lane, but it sounds like that could be a different issue. Sure, and Councilman Clean, the, the council will be presented those ideas and those components before we would actually, we'd have to bring you a contract for that. So as we do the traffic study, okay. We would work with CRS, city center, and, and city staff to, to come up with a couple of different options that's beneficial to everyone and bring it to the council for your review. And Mr. Kling, that, that is one of the concerns that we have with both the embassy suites and that property, have, have had with that property. When you have to travel across four lanes of traffic plus a median there, it does not make it conducive to actually getting in the park. Uh, that's why we're looking at what they call road diets to make it much, much easier to access the park and easier to be... Uh, be in the park and I'll make that park part of uh, part of the development there. And I guess one, one last question, I think it was brought up one time before, but and I'm, I don't want to know if this is you or if this would be more of Randy's area, but uh, uh, do you have a ballpark estimate as far as the amount of revenue, property tax, maybe even some sales tax, lodging tax that would come in as a result of this over a uh, 20, <coughs> 15 year period or whatever? We're working those numbers. I can tell you that the project and talking with the development team, uh, their current budget is, is somewhere in the $80 million range. Uh, they're throwing numbers around, the, like the parking deck started out as a four-story deck. They're, they're densifying as much as they can on the site and it's went from four to six floors. Uh, so you're, you're looking at a you know, $80 million, $70, $80 million uh, ingestment into to the property tax. You know, 28, 30,000 square feet of, of retail generating $300 a square foot you can do the math there, that's about $9 million. Do four and a half times that, that's 
you know, $3 million in sales tax. I but think y'all pretty much put the numbers <coughs> to show that this is a pretty good investment for the city because I know y'all worked on it for a long time. Much better than what it's producing right now. Dr. 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 Robinson. I, I know the goal is to have a thousand hotel rooms downtown that are walkable to the VVC. Um, and there was there's concern right now that we've lost the, <coughs> the holiday in sight for, yeah. for right now and everybody's eager to get those hotels back. Um, it will be 250, well, 150 for sure, mm -hmm. 250 potentially if phase two is, is, um, goes forward. You've got space between the phase one hotel and the phase two hotel, and you said that was potentially for expansion of yes. the hotel. What's the capa projected capacity there in the expansion? You know, that, that we've left that to be determined by the development team. Uh, we've just demanded at least one additional hotel. Uh, you know, if market studies show and, and the economics work that they would take the, the back side of that and do a level structure parking, uh, could be an additional hotel. But we've left them that flexibility for the remaining balance of that site to, to let the market kind of determine what that, that should be. So we'll, we know that for sure we'll get 150 rooms, which will replace what was at the Hilton. I don't know how many were at the Hilton. There are about 250 at the Hilton. So we're, so we're still less than what we had previously. Yeah, we're, we're pretty confident in working with the development team. One of the things uh, late in our, our discussions <coughs> and, and finalizing the documents we brought for you tonight is to find a way for uh, CRS City Center to get early access to the Aquatic Center for a second hotel. So we're pretty confident in this group. We'll put 250 rooms on the ground. So we'll be back to what we had with the hotel, exactly. but we won't get any more. And, and that's the right. But but we'll have other projects that perhaps will get us to that Correct. thousand. Yes. Because I know that's the goal that we're looking for. And, and it's described as an urban hotel. How is an urban hotel different from the other hotel rooms that we have? Um, it, you know, the urban hotel, we're looking at uh, a couple of different options the development team is, and, and we had in the RFP process, we, we had identified about three hotel brands. Uh, one was a Hotel Indigo, another one was an Aloft, and a Hilton product called a Canopy. It, it's more towards a millennial type traveler. Uh, we think it, it blends and, and boasts well for the top retail and restaurants that we're trying to attract there. And the office, uh, I'm most excited about the office component they're putting in. Uh, it's really high ceilings, loft type office, which really allows us to attract, uh, you know, we're working 43 industrial projects. So to have that type of space uh, to attract pe more people like Curse uh, will be an asset to our downtown. And one last question with regard to the council school purchase, and I know this isn't meant to be a briefing on that, but can you just review that again, how that's going to work? So the, the proceeds from the phase two sale will immediately be invested into the development of the council school property? Yeah, yes, ma'am. So under the phase two property, the 2.6 acres, the developer has two options uh, to, to exercise that lease. One is to pay the city $60,000 a year for a 99-year lease just as phase one, or they can take down the 2.6 acres for a million dollars. Um, at that time, they have 24 months to develop the property or start construction. If not, the city has the first right of refusal to take back over that site for the exact amount that they had paid into it. So if they did a lease and they paid $120,000 over that 24 months, we could <coughs> pay them back the 120 dollars and, and get control of the property or a million dollars, vice versa. Uh, should they move forward, take that down either in a lease or a purchase, uh, we will dedicate those proceeds to the redevelopment of uh, council school sites. I know that at one point there was discussion about matching funds from the council school alumni. Would that still be part of this? Yes, we still purchase? look at that. But what, what this would allow us to do you know, is really accelerate that, is to sit down with alumni association and come up with a program for what that site, everybody wants that site to be. The million dollars would allow us to accelerate and at least get the entire project once we've got that scope fully designed. Put it on a shelf, it's ready to bid, it's ready to construct, and then we can come up with a funding plan to, to break ground and actually see that thing completed and, and what it needs to be. Dr. Showers. Speaker, not all. <laughs> Huntsville High School. has been dealt with in a royal way. Council High School, the only black high school in this city, 
for almost 40 years, that structure has sat there in our soul. I am delighted tonight. We have talked about the council, uh, the alumni, uh, the city, uh, a past administration uh, made some efforts. This current administration uh, last year on the mayor battle put capital money in the budget mm -hmm. uh, to move this project and to hear tonight that this school is going to be a part of the second phase is a delight to all of us, to Huntsville. We have the library uh, just to the west of that school. Uh, we got Twickenham now to the east. What a partnership. Uh, as Dr. Robinson has said, I'm not going to go into the uh, specifics of what we are planning to do, but I am excited for the first time in almost 40 years we have some solid plans uh, for that school. And uh, I'm going to jump ahead of everybody else. <laughs> uh, I'm going to vote for this <laughs> for a lot of reasons. Dr. But, Showers. Uh, this is Huntsville. And to see that all of Huntsville is being dealt with, it is a delight. Yes, sir. Dr. Showers, I, I want to commend Mayor Battle. When we structured this, there was no discussion what we would do with the phase two proceeds. Mayor Battle said we are putting it on council school and finally moving that project forward. So I commend Mayor Battle for the vision. Thank you. Mr. Davis, could we go over the cost? So the way I understood it, we've already spent the, the money to demolish the, the building, so there's no cost there? We, we already, the city bought the land many years ago? Yes, sir. And so you said we've already done the environmental study? We have done the environmental. The, the only cost that uh, we have outstanding that, that uh, I want to say unbudgeted, but not really unbudgeted, we have an annual account where we do streetscape improvements in our downtown area that's in the capital plan, has been in there for many years. So it is budgeted. We will just move the next project to do with those funds will be around the city center site. Uh, and the other cost is, is extending our, our Fagan Creek box culvert. Uh, as you know, we have uh, drainage projects and, and drainage funds to do that in our annual capital plan. So, so it's not that we're putting a burden on our capital plan or swapping a project and taking it out of the cap plan in some other sector of the city. There's proceeds set up to do this type of work in our downtown each year in the cap plan. Yeah, and then that was basically my question is yes. where was this money going to come from? It will come out of our annual accounts, both our drainage accounts and our downtown streetscape accounts that, that's in the cap plan. So we're not taking away any road project or resurfacing project or sidewalk project in any part of the city to, to accomplish this. And, and you may have mentioned this. Do we have any design review? Um, we if, do. Okay. So We've already had two design charrettes, both our planning engineering staff and, and city center uh, CRS, and we'll have more as we move forward to final design sometime in July. Thank you. But we do have that control and final approval of the aesthetics, the look, and the layout. Okay, thank you. <coughs> Council members, are there any other questions for Mr. Davis? Mr. Davis, it was, it was confusing to me whether the administration wanted us to take these out of order and vote now or just do it in part of our regular business, which? Let's let's do it in part of our regular business. That'll I give public that. time to be heard. Um, I think Ms. Reed might have some questions or some comments on it, and that'll give us time for public to be heard. Yeah, that's the way we prefer to do it. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, we have no business with outside legal rep representation. We do have a public hearing to be held. Now is the time and place for a public hearing on a resolution authorizing the city clerk treasurer to assess the cost of the boarding and securing against certain properties. Mr. Binion. Yes, uh, this property identified in this resolution was declared unsafe by community development. The owner was given 30 days in accordance with the unsafe building ordinance to get permits and start work on correcting the noted violations. Uh, since the owner failed to respond to the notices and since the, properties were, uh, the property was standing open and ac accessible, community development staff boarded and secured the property. Attachment A identifies the owner and the dates that community development took action and the cost for boarding and securing the property. Uh, the total cost was $326. The owner received a written request for payment and failed to respond. 
so I'm requesting that an assessment be placed on the property to collect our costs. The owner was notified of this proposed action and could wish to speak. Thank you. Does anyone from the public wish to address the council on this particular issue? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Dr. Showers. Discussion? All those in favor of the resolution, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We have two public hearings to be set. We have a resolution to set a public hearing on an ordinance rezoning property lying on the east side of South Shoddy Road and east of South Village Square Road and on the south side of Nature Trail from Residence 1 District to Residence 1A District. This will be set for the March 26, 2015 regular council meeting. The chair moves to set the hearing. Second. Second by Mr. Kling. Discussion? All those in favor of setting the hearing say aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Two is a resolution to set a public hearing on an ordinance rezoning property lying on the west side of McMullen Lane and north of Little Cove Road from Residence 1 District and Residence 1A District to Residence 2 District. This will be set for the March 26, 2015 regular council meeting. The chair moves to set the hearing. Second. Second by Dr. Showers. Discussion? All those in favor of setting the hearing say aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We're not communications from the public. When I call your name, please come to the microphone, state your name and address for the record and you'll have three minutes to address the council. Mr. John Fisher. I'm John Fisher. My address is 2509 Holmes Avenue. Welcome. I'm here as a private citizen and contractor to the intelligence community, agencies that I'm not able to identify. I'm not at liberty to identify. But I am here as part of a criminal investigation with highly sensitive national security ramifications and limited intelligence community support. I, I am here today to express my anger and frustration for the professional incompetence and corruption I have encountered while conducting this investigation by the city attorney and his staff which has caused a claim that should have not cost the city one cent to be run up into excess of five million dollars. That claim right now is at a point where the minimum demand to settle that claim is for one and a half million dollars and legislative concessions to assure that this condition never happen in this city again. And, and sir, Mass, let me stop you there. Are you you have filed a claim against the city? Yes, I have. It was supposed to have been presented. Uh, hold one second, please, sir. Miss Anderson, uh, do you know of this active claim against the city, and should um, we be discussing this in a public meeting? I am not aware of the claim, and it would not be appropriate for us to discuss this. Uh, okay, this so, time. sir, you're telling me you have an active claim against the city right yes, now? Yes, I sent okay. it to the city council. Okay. At this stage of the investigation. The members of this council are individually responsible for any further corruption that this investigation Okay, sir, if you file an after claim, we cannot discuss it here, so it will have to be taken up through the city's attorney's right, office. Well, let me, no, you cannot take it up with the city attorney's uh, office sir, because he is sir, the target. Sir, we're not going to discuss this claim in public. All right. If well, you want to talk about this. something else, that's let, fine, let, but not may, about May I say this? No, and sir, then I'm no, sir, to you're going to answer my question first. We're not going to discuss this claim that's in public. Fine. Okay, All right. go ahead. Well, let me explain to you the conditions that you will have to discuss it under. You're going to have to have an outside counsel. The city attorney cannot handle this matter. You're going to have to hire an outside counsel or we're going to start proceedings. Okay. Mr. President. Mr. Klein. Uh I think it might be helpful just as a general airing for everybody to understand that uh, you and the council, we have a blanket policy for everybody that has filed a legal claim that we don't discuss it. We're not cherry picking on we'll hear one from one person but not from another person. But that is a blanket policy that uh, uh, the chair has come up with and the council members have unanimously supported. Sure, and we've been advised by council. Mr. Eric Truitt. Ms. Truitt, if you give your name and address for the record, please. Uh, good evening, I'm Eric Truitt. I live at 2720 Hood Road. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, I'm here tonight to ask a question to you all about a, uh, a zoning ordinance. I'm reading from the zoning ordinance section 73.3, which states, all trailers except as herein provided shall be located in approved trailer parks 
regardless of whether or not such trailer is occupied. Your city officials have uh, interpreted this to mean that nowhere on private property within the city, except inside a trailer park, shall be a mobile home located. Um, I simply want to ask, what is the purpose of this ordinance? Because I've spoken with zoning, I've spoken with enforcement, I've spoken uh, with planning and permitting, and I've spoken with engineering, and no one has been able to give me any uh, reason as to what is the purpose of this ordinance. Is that your question? Yes, sir. Okay. We'll try to, is anyone from zoning here? Mr. McGuffey? Uh, Jim McGuffey, City Planning. Uh, in my opinion, the purpose of the ordinance would be just to protect the architectural features of the city uh, from a design standpoint. So it's just to keep from having trailers yes, in the sir. city? Okay. Council members, does anybody remember when that ordinance was passed? Or I think that was before our time, but if you said 1973, if there is, are, exceptions are uh, sometimes brought before the Board of Zoning Adjustment, is that correct? Jim? That is correct. I provided him the opportunity to have that option in February and in March uh, to go before the board to maybe help his particular situation. Okay, sir, so there is an ordinance in place and you can go ask for a variance if you'd like. Uh, well, if the council can't give any reason as to the purpose of the ordinance, then I would consider the ordinance to be unconstitutional under Article One, Section 35 of the Alabama State Constitution entitled Objective of Government, which states, that the sole objective and only legitimate end of government is to protect the citizen in the enjoyment of life, liberty, and property, and when the government assumes further functions, it is usurpation and oppression. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Albert Ugbeek. Sir, I'm sorry about your last name. If you could say it for us. If you could bring the microphone down. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Albert Azubike, known as Piccolo. I am the president of Piccolo Auto Cell, located at 805 Oakwood Avenue. Standing before you, your presence this evening to express what I call hostility from the city, police, and zonal inspectors. I've been harassed since I started this business. I've been in business since 1994. Since then, I have been jailed numerous occasions because of doing business with a license. All these are false. Recently, the city of Honzo purchased a few of my property for expanding the road where my business is located. During this time, many things have happened to me and I continue to ask why this <coughs> is going on. Recently, the road that where my business is located there's no driveway where I can get into my business. I've asked why this is going on. I've not received no answer to it. I have a lot of harassment from the police officers, the zoning department. I have a piece of property where my goods are stored. I was told that you have only certain amount of vehicle to be stored there. 
excess of it, you're going to pay $5. Ask why this is going on. Is it only me? I've asked other dealers around me. They said such thing has not existed. I am asking this evening, could you please, Councilman and Mr. Mayor, to find out why this is going on? Mm. And at the same time, please help me to resolve this issue. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Councilman Showers, are you aware of this issue? Dr. Showers? Excuse me? We, you, you, you're aware of this issue and you can meet with him or, or do well, we need to get somebody else to talk about it? Yes, I'm aware of it. Okay. But uh, he, as he has plainly stated, his issue has been before uh, city departments and nothing has been done. Uh, hopefully after tonight, uh, our city administrator and others will insist that he will not have to go through uh, the concerns that he has raised here tonight. And I uh, see no reason why we can't correct that. Okay, in, in the step forward, do I need to do something or do you want me to, is Mr. Hamilton gonna meet with the citizen? Uh, Mr. Or? Hamilton is aware and uh, he is already okay. on record uh, to see that this will happen. Okay. So, Mr. Hamilton, you'll follow up with the citizen? Uh, yes, Councilman. I, uh, I met with Dr. Showers today, and he actually went and, and visited a number of sites that are related to the business in question here uh, to kind of look at some other examples. I've got uh, a certain amount of paperwork on the issue, and I'll meet with the, uh, the relevant department heads just to kind of look to make sure that we're treating everybody equally. There are uh, – the gentleman does have a, a case right now that's in municipal court, Probably not appropriate for us to talk the details of, of that at this point uh, in terms of dealing with the specific citations that he has. Uh, Judge Rodenhauser is hearing that case, uh, and I think uh, I think they're moving to resolution in that particular case. More broadly, we just need to look to make sure that as we look at this type of business and similar similarly situated businesses, that we're uh, we're treating them all equally and fairly, and, uh, and we'll drill into that. Okay. Sir, so somebody from the administration and the council will get back to you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dr. Clarence Johnson. Presiding President, uh, greetings, Mayor, and uh, all the council persons. Dr. Johnson, I hate to interrupt you. If you'll state is, your address, please. My name is Dr. Clarence Johnson. I live at 3302 Buttree Drive here in Huntsville, Alabama. Welcome. I do have a document I'd like to share and give to uh, each of you if I could right quick. Yeah, we can get it from you after you speak if it's okay. okay. Well, I'm here because I'm requesting information under um, the Alabama Open Records Law, Alabama Code Section 36-12-40. And uh, one first item is a copy of the city payroll that lists the, by department name, race, gender, position, specific recorded education level and years of service, annual salary and gross income for the year 2014 by zip code of each employee. <coughs> Also, a list that gives the total number of police officers by rank, race, time, and service and, pre uh, and present recorded education level. Thirdly, a list that provides the total number of firemen by rank, race, time, and service and present ed education level. Fourth, a further request to traffic citations written in the city of Huntsville by race per defendant's zip code year by year beginning with January 1 and ending December 31 for the years 2004, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Also, a list of all tickets given during the same years regardless of zip code by race. Uh, fifth, a copy of the present Huntsville City Workforce Analysis of Permanent Employees, and finally, a copy of the present Workforce Analysis of temporary hire. I appreciate your service to our great city. And I thank, certainly thank you for 
the opportunity to speak this, but I do and will and like to hand you a copy. Absolutely. <laughs> and Dr. Johnson, do you have your contact information on there? Some of that, will, I mean, the, uh, the traffic citations for 2004, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. It probably takes a while. Can we kind of work through that, work with us a little bit, and see if what we can get you that will work out? Certainly. Thank you. Certainly, uh, Mayor. And I also thank you for the work that's going on in and around the city. And I'm going to put my number on one, thank my you. phone number. And uh, with that, all this wonderful work, also I'll just say please don't forget North Huntsville. Amen. Thank you, Dr. Johnson. Next is Lakeisha Washington. Good evening. Good evening. Members of the City Council, Mayor, citizens of Huntsville. Uh, my name is Lakeisha Washington. Um, the address is 805 Oakwood Avenue, Huntsville, Alabama 35811. Um, I'm currently employed at Piccolo Incorporated, which is located at 805 Oakwood Avenue, and I've been working there for several years. Um, my boss is Mr. Albert Azubike. Um, I'm here to inform you all of experiences that I personally have witnessed while working there and uh, which have occurred between Piccolo, um, the city of Huntsville, and its various departments. Um, I've been present on several occasions when these various departments of the city have come to our offices with complaints and citations, and it has been overwhelming, to say the least. Uh, when the city comes, they come in full force, and what I mean by that is they usually come with uh, HPD, Sheriff's Department, Fire Marshals, Zoning Department, unmarked cars, Mark cars, uniform, and, uh, and plain clothed officers. Uh, it literally looks like they're doing a, a drug raid on our property when they do come. The properties are located on a corner lot. And um, so when they come, they, they kind of surround the lot with their vehicles and with the officials. So it, it, it's a big disturbance to our property when they do come. Um, the last visit they made, uh, there were no less than 10 officials there walking the property and, and surveying different things and just citing anything that they saw fit. Um, this is a public nuisance, and I've been asked several times by current and potential customers whether or not they can purchase vehicles from our, our uh, car lot. Um, on occasion, potential customers have been present during these interactions with the city, and uh, many potential sales have been lost due to these distractions. Um, there have been many instances where new customers have come back to us after purchasing vehicles and they are complaining about being pulled over um, because of their tag. Uh, in the city of Huntsville, I believe patrons have 20 days from the date of purchase to get their license plates. Um, but many times customers have been pulled over within the same day or week when they've purchased vehicles from us and they've been told that it's because of the Piccolo tag. And um, they've also been told, they've told me that they have been told by police that they should not have purchased the cars from Piccolo. Um, me, myself, I've been pulled over on occasions um, while driving a car with Piccolo temporary tag on it. I remember one specific incident where I was pulled over by a policeman and scolded for purchasing the vehicle that I was driving. I was told that I should never have purchased the vehicle from Piccolo and that I, uh, he was not even supposed to be selling cars. And when I asked the policeman why, uh, he was not supposed to be selling cars. His reply was he just isn't. Then he continued to tell me about how his cars, most of his cars were wrecked and that he was selling cars that were no good. I informed him then that I was an employee of Piccolo Auto Sales, and he was like, well, y'all need to just quit selling cars. And then Ms. he let Ms. me. Ms. Washington, your time's up. Do you need extra time? Please, if I may. And, uh, will one minute do it? Yes, sir. Uh, Council members, is that okay? Yes. Ma'am, you have one more minute. Yes, sir. Um, so he, he just said that we need to quit selling cars, and he let me go with the mm -hmm. warning. In that moment, I felt belittled and harassed, but I also felt that I would have gotten a ticket had I not told him I worked for Piccolo. Um, so over the years, I've been a, a witness to what I sum up as blatant harassment, and in some cases, just flat out wrongness. And uh, in my conclusion, I'll, I'll say I think it's quite unfair that a businessman of Piccolo's stature 
has to be subjected to such scrutiny on a constant basis. I mean, it's constantly that they're coming through and you know disrupting our business. Um, it's an embarrassment to him personally. It's detrimental to his business. Um, he's a college-educated man. He pays his taxes on time. He helps out the fire and the police department by giving donations whenever they come around or whenever they call and ask for them. And uh, he, he doesn't deserve this type of, of persecution. I feel it's unjust and unmerited. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Jackie Reed. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, my microphone's been moved on this side. That's good. I hope you can hear me better. I may need six more minutes tonight, whatever. I want to thank you for public input. Is the mayor shaking his head already? Anyway, I want to thank all of you for laying the public input. I got all the preachers praying for me tonight because I'm on a roll about the Holiday Inn and have been for quite a while. I would like to tell everyone to wish their family happy Valentine's Day and tell them you love them. The Holiday Inn, yes, it's really, really bothering me that you don't come in this council chamber. You don't have the acres provided that you're leasing, 99-year lease. You don't know the value of the property. You need to hire a real estate person as an attorney. I don't think any of you sitting up there, in other words, I guess I can say I'm unhappy with our government at this point. I've, I moved here in 1958. I've been coming to this council and watching many come and go for 25 years. But this, this group, this government, really is making some serious deals that I've never heard of in this city. You are giving this city away, and I want the taxpayers to wake up and see what you all are doing. You never have a work session. We don't know what you're doing until you bring it in here. I mean, I'm sorry to say this. $60,000 to go to the council school, Mr. Showers. Amen. Somebody pray for that. $60,000 is nothing for a piece of property that you've got over there, even a million. That's nothing. The value of the property. Does any one of you know what we, the taxpayers, paid for the Holiday Inn when we bought it? Would some of you answer that before I continue? Mom is the word. We paid. The taxpayers paid. I don't think Mayor Battle was around. Cleaning and showers was, but they're not going to say nothing about it. Oh. How much, Mr. Clean? It was around the uh, $6 million that when we related to uh, Big Spring Partners. $6.8 million, yes, it was. That's what we paid, by, the taxpayers did. I've heard today already to clean off the Holiday Inn, we've done spent $100,000 just to clean up what's <coughs> what we've already done. And when you start reaching to get an aquatic center and a scrub center, please. You, I know you, you, your deals are made in the developers. I, I, I'm not against the developers, but, but what you all are doing, you have given this city away. You are, you really are, 99 year lease. Like I said, none of you won't be here. I, I bet you, you won't be here. You think I will be, I probably will be, but if God's good to me, I hope he will let me come from Maple Hill down here. Ms. Reed, your, your time's up. Do you need an extra minute? I do. I need two or three extra minutes. Council I'm not through preaching okay? yet. Ms. Reed, you have a minute. Please go ahead. Did the mayor turn me down? No, no. He has no vote on not that. Not yet. Anyway, I may never be the mayor, but if I'll be in a debate at the mayor's election. You can bank on that. Anyway, I just think it's a shame. You don't have your acres laid out. And the developers don't lay some money on the pot down here and show us that they're willing, able, and available to do what you want them to do. I just don't think you're good real estate people. I don't think you're good property people. I don't even think you're good government people because you don't tell the public what's going on. And in this, I see where you're going to do a whole lot of things in this that you didn't mention up there. You're going to do streetscape. Who's going to build a parking garage? And you're ruining the real estate business in this city because all these condos downtown, and my children make as good of money as anybody in this city. They live in a home. I don't think, I think you're going to get stuck 10 years from now with condos sitting downtown and wonder why you built so many of them. Anyway, I think it's wrong what you're doing and not making money up front, not telling us the acres and not getting some money. I'll be back. I'll never let this die. Promise.
Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Brewer? Mr. Kling. Uh, a couple things that, you know, that I want to point out. I don't know about any sinister deals. I think I've had occasional question or two I've asked and about the numbers and everything. The um, new natatorium facility, uh, that's going to be nice for our senior community to have, and I like the idea that we're putting uh, money into it in this new um, hydro pool that Mr. Davis had mentioned. Uh, also, and I'm not the biggest uh, math expert, but uh, we've had some discussion on this, I think it was a long time ago, several months ago, and if you do the math on the sales tax that the city would gain on the building materials that go into making a $90 million facility plus additional lodging tax. Uh, Ms. Riles is a nice person over there, but she's, uh, she's trying to make money from conventions and having more on-site rooms so she can bring in bigger conventions. And of course that means more, more tax revenue that comes in. Uh, there would be some additional hotel retail that would come in. I'm not saying everything that comes in is 100% brand new business, but uh, uh, it's gonna be an increase. But uh, you know, there's nothing that I would say is sinister. I mean, we look at these things, there's some things I'm not wild about, the uh, possible discussion about the narrowing Williams Avenue. You heard me say I didn't like that, Ms. Ms. Reed, but I mean, everybody up here is looking at these things for the, for the public's betterment. And uh, you know, we got a good community. We wanna have downtown do some things. Perhaps there's some things that might come downtown in the future that I'm not gonna be wild about, but I think we're, we're, we're trying to make the city continue to grow and have good things that we can offer for the community. And, uh, you know, I just don't think everything's as sinister and, and evil as, as you make it out to be. I mean, we couldn't be doing too bad if we give you all the time you want pretty much to, to bash us in and tell us how lousy we are when all we're doing is being open and answering questions for you and pr providing information. <coughs> and with Ms. Reed walking out, Mr. President, I guess I'll in my comments but, I mean we try I, m I might correct one thing um, the, where the city did pay 6.8 million dollars for the holiday insight uh, the holiday insight for years uh, we gave back money rent uh, gave back a revenue stream to us uh, also paid taxes to us and and that more than paid back that 6.8 million over the years that we were um, that we held the holiday Inn property uh, when we finally got down to it, we basically had a, had no basis in that property. Um, that that's that's where we came from with a property that had paid for itself over a number of years, and it needed to be redeveloped. It was a 1960s style um, uh, uh, hotel. Started off as a Hilton, was down as a Holiday Inn, was about to lose the Holiday Inn flag, and it needed to be redeveloped. We are right now, one of the things that we have looked at in this downtown area is how do we get boots on the ground in downtown? How do we get people living downtown who enjoy, uh, enjoy the, the recreation aspect of downtown, walking around downtown, that downtown traffic will drive retail, will drive restaurants. And this is the third uh, third case that we've done with this, really fourth. We start off with the Bell Hudson, got 80 apartments in there. We went to Twickenham, we have 245 apartments, 235 apartments that uh, will be there. And uh, they are filling up quickly. Uh, the Avenue is next. Uh, we passed an agreement several weeks ago, or a month ago on the Avenue, uh, which is at Holmes and Jefferson. And then finally, we're finishing up with uh, this Holiday Insight, which is kind of the crown jewel of what we have. The reason we did a 99-year lease is because we think it's very important. It's right across from Big Spring Park, which is right in the middle of the city of Huntsville. And it's kind of the epicenter of what we call in downtown Huntsville. So we wanted to make sure we have some provisions in there that the property has to be kept up to certain standards to make sure that it st uh, stays nice. Uh, but also it adds those hotel rooms that Mrs. Riles is so interested in, the Von Braun Civic Center staff is so well, so interested in. And by the time we add the hotel rooms from there, we replace the hotel rooms from the Holiday Inn, we add the 295 rooms that we have at the embassy, we add the 125 that we have, Spring Hill Suites, and then we have some other developments come. Uh, we'll, we'll be getting, we'll start approaching that thousand room number that we need to make a very vibrant um, uh, civic center. And it will make us be able to be, to have some of the bigger 
um, bigger conventions that are in the United States can come right here to Huntsville, Alabama. They'll see our city, they'll leave money in our city, they'll spend money in our city, and they will keep, keep this city prosperous and vibrant, and that's one of the things that we're looking for. Um, the whole effort out of this is to make a healthy, prosperous, vibrant city, not just a downtown, but a city, and to provide jobs for people from throughout this city. Uh, throughout this county, and we will provide jobs for people throughout this county. Uh, just the number of jobs that will probably happen at the, at the Holiday Inn site, when you look at the offices which are going to be there, look at the restaurants which will be there, look at the retail that will be there, the hotel that will be there, uh, you're going to be adding thousands of jobs to the downtown area. Uh, you will do the same thing over in the avenue where you're going to be adding retail jobs, you're going to be adding office space, and you're going to be adding apartments. You're going to do the same thing at Twickenham, where we've added uh, probably a couple thousand jobs just off that. So when you look at it, we're providing jobs. We're providing opportunity to people. We're providing the opportunity for people to do better for themselves. That is the job of government, and that's the job that we're doing. So uh, to Mrs. Reed, I understand that you have concerns, and thank you for your concerns, but I think the most important thing that we can do as a city is make sure we have a prosperous city. Thank you. Thank you. Lucette Zubuki. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Lucette Azubike, co-owner and vice president of Piccolo Used Auto Sales Incorporated. Um, I'm here to speak with you tonight about the unprofessional conduct and unethical, unethical behavior of some city officials and some officers of the Huntsville Police Department. Three minutes is not a lot of time, so I've just jotted down some t things that I want, and I want, would like to just read off some examples of how we've been harassed how our bi and how our business has been slandered. Um, by um, these officials. Um, I would like to recall on one particular visit during tax season when most used car dealers are expected to have an increase in sales. However, on th during this particular year, our sales were in a negative figure simply because community development, the zone department, the fire marshal, the Huntsville Police Department, and officials from the Huntsville Utilities showed up at our building and the building was condemned. The power was cut off from the line, the meter pulled from the building, and a yellow sign taped to the door stating, do not enter, this building has been condemned. The reason for this is because they told us that our power line was hanging down too low. When I pointed out to them that, all, that our power line was in the exact same position, as other businesses and other houses on the same exact street, the response that I received was, we're not there, for, we're not here for them, we're here for you. Um, on the same day, they went inside of our building and inspected it and required us to purchase different emergency lights. These are the same entities that prior to us receiving our business license, inspected our buildings and gave us a license to do business. Um, so as a result of their actions, we were required to hire an electrician and pay over $1,000 for these changes to be made while the other buildings sitting on the same street with the same power line sit there with no citation and no corrections being made. I'll bring you forward a little bit. That happened a couple of years ago on November the 17th, 2014. Um, Again, officials from the zoning department, community development, the fire marshal, the Huntsville, and the Huntsville Police Department showed up, at our, showed up at our business and they issued us a citation for doing business with the, out of license. The reason for them to give us the citation was because a car, some cars were parked across the street from our business at a gas station and they considered that to be doing business without a license simply because one of the cars belonged to us and ma'am your time's up would you like another minute yes please go ahead uh, one of the cars belonged to us and then other cars belonged to an employee and customers the gas station is not on city property it's, it's privately owned property by an individual who gave us permission to use his property because of the church street expansion and with all the construction parking was difficult 
Sergeant Roberts and Sergeant and Sergeant Hollingworth were the police officers there. And I, when I asked them why were we receiving five separate citations for doing business without a license, um, they simply said, we're giving you a citation for each vehicle that's parked across the street. Um, and that's the, that's the citation in which we have to appear to, in court on, on April the 15th of this year. I asked Officer Hollingworth why did he feel it, w it was necessary for him to constantly show up at our business and frequently write multiple citations. And he said, and I said, you know, as well as I know how long this has been going on, he said to me, we're going to continue to come until we get what we want. And he smiled at me and said, for you all to be gone. Okay. Ma'am, your time's up. We're now at eight Huntsville Utility items. Council members, we have several Huntsville Utility uh, items. Uh, I'll read them, and if there's any ones you'd like to hold for further discussion, we'll do so. Otherwise, we'll consolidate and approve them. 8A is a resolution authorizing approval for the payment of open tech support. B is a resolution authorizing approval for the payment of SAP support. C is a resolution authorizing approval for the payment of Bentley Consulting and Support Services. D is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute agreement to the Green Power Providers Agreement with TVA. E is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a tri-party agreement among TVA, Huntsville, and Qualitas Pharmaceuticals, allowing Qualitas Pharmaceuticals to participate in the Valley Investment Initiative. F is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a tri-party agreement among TVA, Huntsville, and Remington Arms Company, LLC, allowing Remington Arms Company, LLC, to participate in the Valley Investment Initiative. G is a resolution authorizing the upgrade of circuits at County Line and Pension Row for a system upgrade. And H is a resolution authorizing approval to move poles associated with the Highway 72 East Lane addition. Council members, are there any items you'd like to hold from Huntsville Utilities? Chair moves from consolidation of an approval of 8A through H. Second. Second by Mr. Culver. All those in favor of consolidating the Huntsville Utility items, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We have no board appointments to be voted on. We do have board appointment nominations. Mr. President, I move to reappoint James Smith uh, to the I move to appoint, reappoint James Smith to the Community Development Citizen Advisory Council for a three-year term. Thank you very much. We have a nomination to appoint Sharon Olszewski to the Human Relations Commission of the City of Huntsville, Alabama, Place 3, for a term expires September 22, 2018, made by Dr. Robinson. We have a nomination to reappoint uh, Jeffrey Sanders to the Huntsville, Madison County Marina and Port Authority for a term expires July 1, 2019, also made by Dr. Robinson. The chair moves to reappoint Connie Gates to the Animal Advisory Services Advisory Committee place five at large city council appointment for a new term to expire 9 8 2015. The chair moves to reappoint Lisa Pendergrass DMV to the Animal Service Advisory Committee place one city council appointment for a term to expire 9 8 2017. And the chair moves to reappoint Janice Gibbons to the Animal Services Advisory Committee place two city council, council appointment for a ter new term to expire 9 8 2017. Chair moves to reappoint Fred Rodriguez to the Bingo Review Committee representing District 2 for a new term to expire 4 8 15. Chair moves to reappoint Russell Grimes to the Board of Examination Appeals for Construction Industries, Place 7, City Council appointment for a new term to expire 9 21 2017. The chair moves to reappoint Thornton Stanley Jr. to the Board of Examination Appeals for Construction Industries, Place 8, City Council appointment for a new term to expire 9 21 2017. And the chair moves to reappoint John Hall to the Board of Examinations and Appeals for Construction Industries, Place 16, City of Council appointment for a new term to expire, 7 1 2017. Are there any other nominations tonight? Yes, sir. One more I failed to bring up, and that's Gwen Lund Raglan for a term on the Community Development Advisory Committee. Thank you very much. I believe that's a reappointment, correct? Yes. Yeah. Councilor, any other nominations? We're now at 10 approval expenditures. 10A is the resolution authorizing expenditures for payment. Dr. Showers. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I'm delighted tonight to submit $17,019,000 
$668.82 for payment. Second. With motion by Dr. Shower, second by Mr. Kling. Discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Dr. Showers, do you have a finance committee report? I do. I'm going to ask uh, our director, our finance director, Mr. Randy Taylor. Uh, he will share with us uh, those information. Council members, Mayor, I just have one report for you tonight, and that's the number you've been waiting for. It's our sales tax figures uh, for the complete holiday season uh, through December. Those figures are reported to us in January's collection. So for the month of January, we collected 5% more than we did the previous January for that single month, uh, which is above our budget requirements and is a healthier figure than we've seen a while for that period. And then for year to date, four months now, we will be at 4.4% above the same four months for the first of uh, the last year. So uh, that is ahead of our budget requirement right now. And that's the only significant figure we have. Property taxes and privilege licenses are two uh, uh, second and third largest source of revenue for us. We'll know more about those next month. Any question from council members on the Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Taylor, I know that every month uh, is not equal, and obviously uh, Christmas, December is is a big month percentage-wise. But uh, where do you think uh, where do you think we stand as far as uh, percent of revenue that's going to come in for the full year? For the that's hard to say right now, uh, Councilman. The we actually have to get to March uh, to have a be comfortable enough to share a, a figure, and there's still a, a variance of about a percent, which is about a million and a half dollars to us. So uh, it is the we get most of our sales tax in the first four months of the year, but by the time we get to March, history tells us that we collect about 50 percent for the first six months or half the year. So because there's some other low months in there. Uh, February, January tend to be lower months. So uh, by the time we get to March, we'll see what that figure is and we'll uh, be able to give you some kind of confidence, assuming those uh, all the variables stay in place. Would the month of December represent 10% of the revenue for the full year or less or more than that? Well, of course, an average month is 8%. And so uh, the month of January, uh, would be our highest month of the year, and it would I can't tell you exactly what that figure is, but it would be probably in the 10 to 11 percent range. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. President. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I want to ask the approval of some travel. Uh, number one, a resolution approving travel for Councilman Will Cover to attend the Chamber of Commerce Montgomery trip on April 7th through 8th, approved travel for Councilwoman Jeannie Robinson to attend the Chamber of Commerce Washington, D.C. trip April 19th through 21. Resolution approving travel for Councilman Bill Clain, Jr. to attend the Chamber of Council Commerce Washington trip on April 19th through the 21st, approving travel for Councilman Will Cover to attend the Chamber of Commerce Washington, D.C. trip on April 19th through the 21st, approving travel for Council Will Cover to attend the 2015 Alabama League of Municipalities Annual Convention, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, May 16th through the 19th, Approving travel for Councilman Richard Shower Sr. to attend the 2015 Alabama League of Municipalities Annual Convention, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, May 16 through 19, 2015. Resolution approving Jeannie Robinson to attend the 2015 Alabama League of Municipalities Annual Convention. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, May 16th through the 19th. Seven uh, requests. Mr. President, I move the approval of uh, all seven requests for travel. Okay. Thank you. Dr. Showers, the moving call to approval of the seven items. The chair seconds it. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It carries. All right. Communications from the mayor. Mayor Battle. 
Excuse me. Thank you there, Mr. President. Um, we have, um, I have an appointment to make. I would like to announce the reappointment of Sheila Brown to the Research Park Board for a term to expire 7-22-2019. Um, and for those who have never been, um, there's not many who would qualify out here, but uh, we have a, a free Senior Crime Prevention Academy beginning February 26th through May 28th. It'll be on Thursdays from 1 to 4. Our police department puts, on, puts this on at the Public Safety Training Academy uh, on Sparkman Drive. It is a great event, uh, and it helps people get to know our police. They become our partners. Uh, they are the ones who are eyes and ears out there. And, uh, uh, and as I said, I don't see many in here who would who would qualify for it. But if you would be interested in it, please call our, our police officers, our police offices. Uh, this Saturday is a free Mardi Gras parade in downtown Huntsville at 3:30 on Saturday, February 14th. Wear warm clothes because it may be pretty cold. Uh, and also on February 18th, the Big Picture Citizens Academy on Aging. Uh, happens at 2 o'clock at the Municipal Building right here in these chambers. Uh, and this, this uh, talks about the impacts of everything from housing options to transportation to mobility to quality of life uh, for our, our, um, our aging citizens. And our guest speaker is Whit Blanton. Uh, we also, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to invite all of you to come back out and everybody else who is listening on February 23rd at 7 o'clock right here in these chambers. The Huntsville-Madison County Legislature will be holding a forum. They want to hear what you think, and I would encourage everybody to come out, and you can let your legislators know what you think uh, about right before this next session gets started, and they will be going into session right after that. So that is February 23rd at 7 o'clock, and it is an open forum for anybody who has concerns that they would like to talk to the legislature about. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Culver. <clears throat> yes, thank you, Mr. President. And I do apologize for uh, running late for the council. There was an accident uh, on, I believe I shared with you, Highway 21, but 204 between 21 and 431. Uh, I do believe I have uh, one of my former students. Did she leave? She did leave. Okay, all righty. <coughs> Just wanted to recognize her. I believe she's in grad school. Are there any other students back there? Uh, yes, if you'd like to go to the mic. Uh, Mr. President, if I could yes, you defer may. some of my time to this gentleman and uh, my former student. If you all like to come to the mic and tell us who you are and why you are here. Yes, sir. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> I didn't expect for Councilman Culver to put me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> I did but, it in class. Um, <laughs> I am Amber Staples. I am currently a graduate student of urban and regional planning at Alabama A&M University. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Robert Turner. I'm a graduate student, but I have a question for you all. All right, according to affordable housing, well, low-income housing, like energy, like energy efficiency. So uh, what are you all doing for like proper installation and energy efficiency for low-income housing? Uh, Mr. Is President. it someone I can contact for that or? Yes. Uh, Mr. President, if Go I Go ahead, may. please. Um, of course, Community Action Partnership um, also provide installation in conjunction with uh, community development uh, Mayor, I believe that you all have committed some of those funds to us to uh, weatherize people who fall within that income category. And, and it's a good thing uh, because Huntsville Utilities, um, we, we're paying folk utility bills and yes. we wouldn't have to expend that money if we could weatherize our house yes, so sir. that it could keep their utility bills uh, more affordable. And I wouldn't have to constantly call on Huntsville Utilities to exactly. help us out when, you know, we run out of money. We get the federal money somewhere about $3 million a year to, to help with various projects. Mm -hmm. And uh, that money just doesn't last long, but we do the best that we can with it, coupled with what we get from the city. So please feel free to contact Mr. <coughs> Kenneth Binion 
Who, sir? Um, and or me at Community Action Partnership. Okay. I will contact you, sir. Okay. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. Kling. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, during the period since the last uh, council meeting, the city suffered the loss of one of our really great citizens, a gentleman who I've known for many years, I think many people in this room have known. Uh, Ed Ottman had passed away. Ed uh, had served as one of our founding members of the Solid Waste Authority and uh, had served uh, for, the, for there for, for numerous years. And I think one thing that people you know, speaks about the management skill of him, James Ledbetter, and the other uh, members of that board, is the fact that the tipping fees that uh, are charged to the city uh, by the Solid Waste Authority have not increased in uh, well over 10 years. And uh, Ed, uh, certainly one of the people who helped uh, make sure that ma proper management was being done on that board, and uh, he will be greatly missed. Ed had also been uh, very active in the Cahaba Shrine for numerous years, and he had worked at uh, Redstone Arsenal. Uh, among other things, in the political circles, he had been the uh, campaign manager coordinator for uh, former Mayor Joe Davis, who had served uh, and was elected uh, uh, for numerous terms. And uh, again, Ed was a friend, and I think a person that had a lot of respect in this community, both uh, on the arsenal and in the uh, civilian population and in city government, and I think we will certainly miss him. Also, I'd like to ask this time, uh, I see Mr. Tommy Brown. Uh, Tommy, could you come up to the mic, please? Uh, there was a neighborhood issue concern that was uh, communicated to me, and I just want to wave a flag to you so that uh, you, could, you could help address it. We're moving microphones around. <laughs> the, um, uh, the Mayfair neighborhood had contacted me. Uh, several people from that neighborhood association uh, had expressed concerns. Uh, there is a no left turn sign that's on the eastern part of Center Avenue where it comes out into Whitesburg Drive. And also there is uh, no parking signs also on Center in that area. And the neighborhood told me that there had been uh, numerous violations. And I told them I would relay to you that uh, we could try to get enforcement uh, uh, in that area. Mr. Kling, we are, are, our parking enforcement officers continue to patrol that area. Um, according to the supervisor, there's not a lot of citation activity because there's not a lot of violations, but we continue to patrol that. Uh, relative to the, uh, to the turn movements out of there, I'll defer that to uh, Captain Malone, but uh, I understand that they're aware of this situation okay, and we'll, just, uh, uh, there are signage we'll there's city, city signs up there and the, according to the neighborhood yeah. uh, there seems to be a lot of violations and i told them i would relay it to will the appropriate we'll people. continue to enforce that and, and make sure that uh, we're in that neighborhood on a regular basis mr Kling, i addressed the the concerns on the the traffic violation piece to the chief earlier this evening and they'll they'll continue to monitor that okay thank you thank you mr president thank you dr showers thank you mr president uh I had the opportunity to uh, attend the Diversity Leadership Collodium and was one of the speakers of this past Tuesday night. On yesterday, I had an opportunity to attend uh, the Boys and Girls Clubs of North Alabama Youth uh, of the Year uh, Luncheon. And of course, I would like to announce that um, tomorrow, at 2 p.m., along with Dr. Robinson, she uh, was the person that has formed the Business Alliance in South Huntsville. So I had an opportunity uh, to get with her, and I told her that I was interested in creating the same opportunity in North Huntsville uh, between Oakwood uh, and uh, Max Luther, we have a similar situation. Uh, stores have closed, businesses have gone out of business, some uh, dilapidation. And uh, so tomorrow at 2 o'clock, uh, Dr. Robinson, I've invited several of the business persons Good. to come to the meeting. Uh, we'll be meeting here at City Hall uh, on the seventh floor. And of course, uh, the purpose of the meeting 
is to organize a business association uh, that we may be able to put all our minds together on how we can better enhance uh, the area between uh, North Oakwood uh, up into uh, the street called Max Luther. Uh, I'm certainly uh, inviting others. Uh, Dr. Johnson is here tonight. Is he still? Yes. Uh, I'd ask our, our leader, Dr. T.C. Johnson, to uh, ask our committee, uh, those that will be available, uh, to come in at 10 uh, at uh, 2 o'clock uh, here tomorrow. Good. Councilmember, we need to we need to speak in the microphones and only one at a time. So, Dr. Showers, you have the floor. Okay. Thank you. I'm concerned for over 45 years this school district has been under a desegregation lawsuit. There have been several attempts uh, to uh, move from the fact that we are not unitary in Huntsville. The United States Department of Justice received a consent plan from uh, the board, uh, and the DOJ submitted a plan to the board. Both of those plans were denied. Uh, the judge, Judge Hackler, uh, decided that she wanted to revisit and to create a team of persons, uh, the board district and the DOJ, uh, to resubmit a consent order uh, that would arrive at unitary status. Overall, and looking at the recent consent that's submitted by the Board of Education, little has changed. Though this consent order is in the hands of those who received the document on February the 8th, it is apparent that the district has convinced the United States that it's feasible to continue to operate two independent school systems, one in the north, predominantly black, one in the south, predominantly white. This consent order does not address nor alleviate this fact. Based on the proposed feeder patterns, students from the majority of the failing schools will have no relief but to attend a failing school at the next level, but only in North Huntsville. Butler High School, a failing school, that's being proposed and recommended to be closed. This school is west of its current site is Huntsville High School, about three miles away. There is another school that they are being proposed to go to 12 miles away, and that's Johnson High, Jemison High School to the north. This district is determined to keep a black school district in the north and a white school district in the South. This district is determined, it appears, to not change or to not correct this 45-year-old problem. Huntsville has been bound by a desegregation order. Are we closer to unity 
Now, after 40 plus years, no. Huntsville is still divided. As long as there are two school districts, one black and the other white, Huntsville is not ready for unitary status. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Dr. Robinson. I had the opportunity this past month to hold my first town hall meeting. Uh, many thanks to the friends of the Bailey Cove Library who hosted that meeting for me. We had 60 people in attendance, standing room only, which is really pretty uh, remarkable given there were no controversial issues. It was just a very friendly get to know you meeting. And I'm looking forward to our next one on April 30th at 6.30 again at the Bailey Cove Library. Many thanks to everybody who made that meeting a great success. Uh, also this week, we had our second meeting of the South Huntsville Business Association. Kathy Martin, city engineer, and Al Hobson from, or Les Hobson from ALDOT presented the, uh, the proposed road plans that are going to be taking place in South Huntsville and gave the businesses an opportunity to ask questions about how it might impact them and, and to begin that two-way com communication that, uh, that was one of our objectives when we started the Business Association. We held it at Torch Technologies and Bill Rourke uh, took the occasion to share with us his vision for his expansion on the South Parkway. Uh, and he, I'm hoping that he will serve as a model for other commercial enterprises that might want to begin revitalizing that part of, of the parkway. Uh, we're going to meet again on March 10th, and our focus is going to be on economic development and some of the efforts that are going to be made to revitalize that area. And I really look forward tomorrow to, uh, to meeting with Dr. Showers and uh, with, with folks who are interested in following that model. And uh, I've been told that there are other parts of town that want to follow it as well. It's, it's a great model to get businesses talking to each other and talking to the city and it provides a service for the city as well, so they just have that, that one voice to, to work with. Um, communication is critical in good government, and this is one small step that we're taking to make that happen, and I look forward to, to working with you, Dr. Showers, to, to make that happen in North Huntsville as well. Um, like Dr. Showers, I also had the opportunity to attend uh, the comment sessions on the proposed consent order. Um, I, there is certainly a lack of clarity in the order that's led to some confusion. It's not perfect by any means. I'm not sure that perfect is possible this side of heaven, um, but it is good. And there's a saying that perfect should never be the enemy of good, and that's certainly true in this case. Uh, it's an opportunity for us to move forward as a community, and I hope that we will seize this opportunity to move forward so that in the years to come, as we do the hard work that's going to be required of us by the consent order, we will, the city as a whole, will eventually deserve to be granted unitary status by the courts. And I think that that's possible. And finally, I want to thank a number of the department heads who have been incredibly helpful uh, to me and to the residents in District 3. I told Terry Hatful today that I thought he and his staff were miracle workers, um, and I thank them for their efforts on behalf of some of our residents. Uh, thank also, again, Kathy Martin, Marty Calvert in the engineering staff, and Shane Cook, who took uh, time out of their very busy schedules, and Joy McKee to come and look at some issues that some of our residents have had and, and did some creative thinking to address those issues. We have, and I tell people this all the time, if I have learned anything in the last couple of months and I, since I've been sitting in this chair, it is that we have tremendously dedicated, service-oriented people working for this city, and I am just so grateful to be a small part of it. Thank you, Dr. Robinson. Uh, we're now at 13 unfinished business items for action. 13A is resolution number 14-956, approving of and assenting to the vacation of a portion of National Boulevard and Meadowbrook Drive abutting the new Grissom High School campus. This was postponed at the January 22nd, 2014 regular council meeting. Ms. Anderson, is this in order tonight? Uh, no, uh, Mr. President, we ask that it be postponed once again. We need some paperwork to get in, so we'd ask that it postponed until uh, February 26th. Okay, we will not take this up for action tonight. We're now at uh, 14 new business items for introduction. As I mentioned earlier in the meeting that the administration has asked that we consider 14A tonight, so we'll have to uh, 
do that by unanimous consent. It, it is an ordinance to amend section 20 of ordinance number 04-315, personnel policies and procedures for modification to the smoking policy. The chair moves to unanimous consent to so consider can, this item tonight. We have a second by Dr. Showers. Dr. Showers, how do you vote? Aye. Dr. Robinson? Aye. Mr. Culver? Aye. Mr. Kling? Aye. Chair votes aye. We have unanimous consent. The chair moves for approval. The main motion is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Kling. Mr. Thomas, could you please uh, explain this and add, tell us why you have to do this tonight and uh, go ahead and explain the ordinance. Thank you. Yes, sir. Council, this is an amendment to our personnel policy and procedures manual. What it would do is it will update our smoking policy to include um, what we see a growing trend is electronic cigarettes. And we also want to address um, tobacco products such as uh, chewing tobacco and things of that nature. <coughs> but um, there's no amendment or change to the policy with regards to prohibiting it in work in, in, in our city buildings a, as well as our vehicles. But we want to amend it to include uh, electronic cigarettes and other tobacco products um, by our employees. Thank you. Questions? Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. The uh, smoking ordinance as it is, uh, though we, we're not addressing what I'm going to say is the distance. Uh, there are those who are still smoking on the property, uh, outside the door, uh, outside the entrance. Uh, most institutions that have smoking ordinances on record, they have a distance that you have to be from the uh, entrance uh, to, to do your smoking. Not at the front door, not at the back door, but a certain number of feet that you must be away. Do we see any time uh, putting that in with the city properties? That's something we definitely, you know, we can look at. Uh, we, we didn't address it in this amendment, but we would research that and, and can get back with the council at a later time about Thank maybe you very much. Further discussion? Call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries. We're now at 15 new business items for consideration of action. The chair holds 15X, 15Y, 15Z, 15KK, and 15LL. Are there any other items you'd like to hold? I'll repeat the ones I held, 15X, 15Y, 15Z, 15KK, and 15LL. Any other items you'd like to hold? Hearing none, 15A is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter agreement between the City of Huntsville and LoanDepot.com LLC as a participating lender of the Down Payment Assistance Program. B is a resolution authorizing the mayor to agreement between the City of Huntsville and National Commerce Corporation as a participating lender for the Down Payment Assistance Program. C is a resolution authorizing the mayor to commit home funds to Stratus Development LLC for Lenox Park Senior Apartment Community. D is a resolution authorizing the mayor to end a contract between the City of Huntsville and Family Services, Inc. for the new construction of affordable housing using community housing development organization proceeds. E is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute modification number one of the agreement between the City of Huntsville and New Futures, Inc. for services to the homeless population. F is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute modification number one to the agreement between the City of Huntsville and Family Services Center, Inc. for services to the homeless population. G is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute modification number two to the agreement between the City of Huntsville and Community Action Partnership of Huntsville, Madison, and Limestone Counties, Inc. for services to the homeless population. H is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute modification number two to the agreement between the City of Huntsville and Community Action Partnership of Huntsville, Madison, and Limestone Counties, Inc. for weatherization services for the extremely low and low income population. I is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter a memorandum of understanding between the City of Huntsville and Ben H. Wilkinson Municipal Iceplex Board regarding municipal iceplex expansion. J is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter a co cooperative agreement between the City of Huntsville doing business as Huntsville Madison County Emergency Management Agency and the Alabama Law Enforcement Agency for State Homeland Security Grant Program Assistance Allocation Letter Agreement for ICL. K is a resolution authorizing mayor to, to agreement with the low bidder meeting specifications outlined in the task summary of bids for acceptance. L is a resolution authorizing mayor to a joint purchase agreement with the Madison County Commission for the joint purchase of crushed stone. 
M is an ordinance to amend budget ordinance number 14-665 by changing the authorized personnel strength in various departments and funds. N is an ordinance to amend budget ordinance number 14-655 by changing appropriating funding for various departments and funds. O is a resolution authorizing acceptance of donations. P is a resolution authorizing mayor to modify the special employment agreement between the city of Huntsville and Carlos L. Bowden. Q is a resolution authorized mayor in an agreement between the city of Huntsville and Kavanaugh McDonald Consulting LLC for the purpose of providing actual analysis of the city's retiree health insurance plan. R is a resolution authorized mayor in an agreement between the city of Huntsville and the U.S. Marshal Service to accept overtime funding for officers assigned to the Regional Fugitive Task Force. S is a request for authorization to advertise and fill vacant and budget position of general services control technician at a higher rate than minimum if necessary. T is a resolution authorizing a cooperative agreement between the City of Huntsville and the United States Department of Agriculture, Animal and Plant Inspection Services, Wildlife Services. U is a resolution authorizing the mayor to end agreement between the City of Huntsville and Rourke Train Chalk Carving for Earth Day event at Hayes Nature Preserve on April 18, 2015. V is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute modification number 17, the Supplemental Development Agreement, TIF 5 Series 2010A, between the City of Huntsville and LW Redstone Company, LLC. W is a res resolution authorizing the clerk treasurer to invoke first commercial bank letter credit number 129 for Hawks Ridge 5th edition. Double A is a resolution authorizing mayor in agreement between the city of Huntsville and Falcon Star Software Inc. for maintenance and support. Double B is a resolution authorizing mayor to utility relocation reimbursement agreement between the city of Huntsville and American Midstream LLC for re relocation of utility facilities for Greenbrier Parkway Phase 3, project number 6513RD02. Double C is a resolution authorizing the mayor to modify the agreement between the City of Huntsville and LBYD Inc. for engineering design services for Rideout Road, Aldot Improvements, project number 6514SP17 by modification number one. Double D is a resolution authorizing the City Council to amend the contract between the City of Huntsville and Miller and Miller Inc. for Gateway Greenway Phase 2, base bid and option number one, option number two, option number three, option number 4A, and option number five, project number 6513WP01 by change order number two. Double E is the resolution authorized to mayor agreement between the City of Huntsville and Garber LLC for engineering construction administration services for Zert Road, project number 6506RD01 and ACAA 62033 ATRP008. Double F is a resolution authorized to mayor into agreement between the City of Huntsville and the Low Bitter Mid South Paving Inc. for Gateway Greenway Phase 3, project number 6514WP01. Double G is a resolution authorizing the mayor to modify the agreement between the City of Huntsville and Garver LLC for engineering services for 2014 flow monitoring program, annual operations, maintenance data analysis and reporting, product number 6514SP20 by modification number one. Double H is a resolution authorizing the mayor to modify the agreement between the City of Huntsville and Garver LLC for land serving service, service Land Surveying Services for Sanitary Sewer Manhole Mapping, Project Number 6514-SP08, by modification number one. Double I is a resolution authorized to mayor an agreement between the City of Huntsville and Garver LLC for Engineering Construction Administration Services for 2014 Water Pollution Control Sanitary Sewer Rehabilitation, Project Number 65-15-SP12. Double J is a request for authorization to advertise and fill vacant and buzzed position of parking services clerk at higher rate than minimum if necessary. Double M is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute an agreement between the City of Huntsville and Brimstone Music Group, Inc. The chair moves to consolidation and approval of 15A through W, 15 double A through double J, and 15 double M. Second. I'm not sure who made the second. Dr. Mr. Kling made the second. We have a motion for consolidation and approval by the chair, seconded by Mr. Kling. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It carries. 15X is an ordinance declaring certain property as surplus and no longer needed for municipal purpose. As this is an ordinance, the administration has asked us to uh, vote on it tonight, so we will require unanimous consent to do so. The chair moves for unanimous consent to consider this item tonight. Second. Second by Dr. Showers. Dr. Showers, how do you vote? Aye. Dr. Robinson? Aye. Mr. Culver? Aye. Mr. Kling? Aye. The chair votes aye. We have unanimous consent. The main motion is the ordinance declaring certain property as surplus and no longer needed for an admissible purpose. The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Dr. Showers. Mr. Davis, could you explain this, please? Council members, before we can uh, ask you to enter into a ground lease and a development group, uh, we first have to declare both pieces of property, both the Holiday Inn site and the Williams Aquatic Center site as city surplus so that you can enter into a uh, third-party contract with someone. Uh, <clears throat> 
as it's been mentioned tonight, you know, we paid $6.8 million for Holiday Insight. Tonight, with your vote, we are not giving that property away. You still will have control. You are entering into a lease. Uh, the only piece of, of the development would be the 2.6 acres of the Williams Aquatic Center, which you can enter. The developer has the right to enter into a $60,000 per year, 99-year lease. It's not a $60,000 lease. It's an annual lease or a million-dollar purchase. So first item of business that you have to do is declare this, the property surplus. Thank you. Ms. Anderson, can you advise the council? This seems uh, strange to me. Why do we have to clear a property as surplus? Um, state law requires that before any property is leased that it has to be declared surplus by the municipality. It's consistent with state law. Thank you. Council members, questions for Ms. Anderson or Ms. Davis? Just, just to clarify, surplus means that, that there is no use, the municipality has no use for it. Yes, it, it would be appropriate to declare it surplus if the municipality considers that there's no appropriate use. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. Why is a resolution authorizing the mayor to execute a ground lease between the city of Huntsville, Alabama and CRS City Center, LLC? The chair moves for approval. Second. Second by Dr. Showers. Mr. Davis. Council members, this is the, the lease agreement. Um, it provides for $144,000 annually for 99 years for the Holiday Insight. And then again, the option two property, the 2.6 acres uh, with the option of either a 60 thousand dollar year annual lease or a million dollar purchase thank you council members questions or discussion i think a lot of hard work has gone into it mayor staff legal all the engineering and, and folks and uh, as a council member let me just say thank you for all y'all have done and for you folks welcome to huntsville further discussion all those in favor signify by saying aye aye opposed carries z is a resolution authorizing mayor to execute a development agreement between the city of huntsville alabama and crs city center llc vote to approve um, second i'm sorry i had mr Klingham and dr showers at the exact same time um, dr showers will say you made the motion mr Kling, you seconded is that correct okay mr davis council members this is the final docket that, that we need to move the project forward it's the development agreement it uh, contains inside the, the requirements for what the city will do as far as the streetscape and the requirements by CRS uh, City Center from what they must build in phase one as I went through the presentation and also in phase two and the timelines for which they must accomplish that, that I went through in the presentation. And I will say that this development agreement has been passed through uh, numerous departments of the city of Huntsville. It's been going, it's, uh, planning, fi finance, uh, engineering, uh, all the departments and in, in administration and legal, all the departments have, have weighed in on it. Um, it has been a, uh, it's been a good process to go through and I think we have a very good agreement. Thank you. Further, further comments, discussion, questions? Call for vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? It carries. Council members, can I just say thank you. I always do this to you, but uh, thank you for the confidence you have in the administration for us bringing projects like this to the community. Thank you for your vote. Thank you. 15 double K is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter a special employee, employee agreement between the city of Huntsville and Brenda M. Martin. Move to approve. Second. Motion by Dr. Showers, a second by Mr. Culver. Discussion? Uh, I'd like somebody from the administration to explain why this sure. is needed. This, this is a special contract. It's a renewal of a contract that we just had. Uh, Ms. Martin provides the services of a on-air on host and does interviews that really gives us more transparency and talks about what the city does, how they do it, why they do it. Uh, and it's part of our transparency um, uh, policy of making sure that people understand uh, what, the, what the process of the city is and uh, what we're working on. She has interviewed many, many people out in this audience out here, including department heads, and has had uh, interviews that are very enlightening when you look at uh, for the general public so that they can understand what the city is doing. Yeah, and, and it's a minimum, I'm sorry, it's a, a not to exceed $23,000 contract. And I wasn't in support of this last time, and I and I, I see it on TV, and I assume it's doing a good job. Um, I'm still skeptical why we have to have a, a, another person added to the administration's uh, cost to do this. Uh, Brenda Martin does a fine job. I've watched it on TV. She's she's perfect, but she's not an employee. And so my, my question, I guess, is still why add uh, more costs to the administration <coughs> of the city? 
I think your your whole thing is to be if you're going to have a communications uh, process, you need to go through that whole process. You need to make sure that you have have the possibility of doing that. Could somebody else in the city do it? Uh, we have a number of people who will be doing it. Uh, Kenny Anderson will do it. Uh, Ms. Scrimpcher will be doing it. I will be doing it. But you need somebody professional in there, uh, somebody who professionally understands the city. And Ms. Martin worked for years and years for the city, understands this city, understands what we do, and who can take that understanding of the city and talk to city department heads, uh, city agencies, and reflect their role as they, as they um, interact with the public. And <clears throat> uh, to me, it's one of the best ways we can spend money. It's also one of the cheapest ways that we can get an employee because we do not pay any benefits on that $23,000, uh, seeing as how she is retired from the city. This $23,000 uh, does not cost us, like any other employee, a 40% load on uh, benefits. So it's a strict uh, $23,000 not to exceed $23,000 uh, uh, contract. Further discussion? Uh, one question. Uh, the uh, the job description is it's the same as last as the last one that just expired. Yes. Okay. So I know before she had served in as head of multicultural affairs, but still, all of that the community outreach in that area is Kenny Anderson's area. Right. Yes, sir. So they got two well-defined uh, parameters that they're both in. Mr. Culver? Yes, I just wanted to kind of add to that. Uh, Ms. Martin has worked for three prior administrations, including your administ administration, Mayor Battle, yes. and I think that she brings a lot of credibility to what is happening here in city government, uh, uh, especially, in, and not just in the African-American community, but throughout Huntsville, because she has made those connections and I'll be honest with you, I, I know there are some legal ramifications, but $23,000 a year for what she does is she's being very generous. She's being very philanthropic to us. So uh, thank you, Mayor, and uh, I certainly support that. Further discussion? Call for a vote. All those in favor, signify by, say, by saying aye. 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 And the chair votes no. It passes four to one. Double L is a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter a consulting agreement between the city of Huntsville and the Scrimp Scrimpture Company, Inc. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion by Dr. Shower, second by Mr. Culver. Uh, mayor, could you explain this, please? Um, Mr. President, this is the same contract as we had last year with Ms. Scrimpture. Uh, Ms. Scrimpture provides communication services for administration and the full city. Uh, she is part of our transparency communication policy. Uh, she works under contract uh, rather than uh, receiving uh, benefits, and it's a straight contract. Um, her benefits are taken care of elsewhere, uh, and it works very well for, uh, for our administration. Discussion? And Mayor Battle, why can't she do the TV program that Ms. Martin does? Uh, if, if you are, when you're up in our office, I think we're, we're running from uh, one issue to the other issue, making sure that people understand what, what, we, what we're doing, why we're doing things. Uh, to take the, uh, the couple hours out to go up to ETV, do a, do a program, to come back, there's just not that, that much time in a day. Uh, she already works 40 to 50 hour weeks uh, for the city of Huntsville. And uh, I can assure you, if, if I could double up on people, I would, but, um, but I don't want to kill anybody either out of this. So <laughs> I, I think it's better that we have the proper people in the proper places and en enough people to actually do the job. Thank you. Further discussion? I guess I would also add that there's two different skill sets that we're talking about. Um, what Brenda's doing is scripting programs and scheduling programs and coming up with program content, and that's really different from what Ms. Grimshaw is doing in a PR and communications director role here in the city. Yeah, and, and obviously most of y'all know Ms. Grimshaw's <coughs> background. She worked for a television station for years, and so do Mr. Anderson continues to run a program on Sunday. So my question is, we have two very capable people up there. Do we need three and mayors justifying his and we're going with it? But though that's my line of reasoning. It's not anybody, the individual people. It's just why three instead of two. Further discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We're now at 16 legal department item transactions. We have uh, B1 has been deleted. We have 16A, 1, 2, and 3 vacations at easement, 16B, 2, 3 vacation at right of ways, and 1 deed for acceptance. The chair moves to consolidation and approve the legal department items. Second. Second. 
Second by Mr. Kling. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. We're now at non-roster communications from the public. If you'd like to address the council, please go to the microphone, state your name and address. You have three minutes to address the council. Ms. Reed? Okay, I, I really want to apologize for being so bad to each one of you because I do love every one of you, I do. But my boss, you know who my boss is? The man upstairs, he keeps me awake at night wanting me to bring these issues straight to you all, trying to tell you, use some common sense when you're dealing with government. I've yet to see common sense. I guess that's where I keep coming on back down here. I want to thank Joy McKee and all of you and whoever cleaned up Woodson over there on Holmes Avenue. It began to look like heaven. It sure did look like a trash pile before somebody got a hold of it. But thanks very, very much for that. Uh, I really, I really want to say how you're giving money away and helping all these developers. And then now the next thing that's going to go away is the Joe Davis Stadium. We need some work sessions on the Joe Davis Stadium. You're going to give that away, too. I want the public to know that's in the making. Tearing it down, giving it to a developer, and giving them the land. We don't need it. Declare it surplus. Sometimes you need to think of what we're doing. I don't know who's running this city. I wish I could find out and get my hands on who's really telling who what to do. I don't think the mayors are running it. Downtown Inc., Big Spring Partners or Downtown Redevelopment? Are all these people telling you all what to do? We're not having any work sessions. We don't bring nothing before the public anymore before you bring it in here and all of us has to vote on it. I mean, it really concerns me. The Belks property out there that you put, I'd say possibly $10 million out there. Now the mall's empty. 37 stores are empty in the big mall down there. You got Whole Food down here you gave $8 million to in that corner, which to me, I drive through there every day, and I think that's going to be one big wreck down there. Buildings are empty all over this city. Road and traffic is terrible. People want to know, when are you going to go borrow some money and quit helping the developers in downtown? I'm not all about downtown. Look at these roads through this city, and I would like to ask the mayor sometime, where do we stand on old Madison Pike? That's an eight-year deal that we started eight years ago, and I hadn't heard a word about it. When will old Madison Pike ever open up? Happy Valentine's Day, and thank you. Thank you. Ms. Washington? Is that you? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I missed your name. I'm sorry. No Lenise Arnold, 2112 okay. Buckingham Drive, Huntsville, Alabama. Thank you. Thank you to the council for your support of the 24 in 2014 of the North Alabama Coalition for the Homeless as we strive to eradicate homeless in homelessness in Huntsville. We would like to thank the Transportation Department for providing free rides to our emergency warming centers, our Community Development Department for the financial assistance for our warming centers, and you, Mayor Battle, for your support of the coalition in 2014. On January 27, 2015, we conducted our HUD mandated, our, our HUD mandated annual point in time count of all the homeless citizens in North Alabama. We would like to thank Ken Binion, Takesa Coleman Lacey, Patricia McCarter, and John Hamilton for sending Officer Tory Green to assist us in conducting our street population count. I am pleased to report that we have seen a decrease in homeless in the homelessness population in Madison County by approximately 89 persons and a total of 100, 118 individuals in North Alabama. Although much has been accomplished, we still have much work to do. We, we are still seeing 62 individuals that are residing in our camps as well as other inhabitable conditions. In January of 2015, we operated our warming center for the year and we housed approximately 62 individuals. I am pleased to announce that we will once again open up, open up the warming center on this Saturday to house our individuals that are in the camps. Thank you. Dr. Clarence Johnson, 3302 Butchery Drive, Huntsville, Alabama. I'm certainly appreciative of all the great work going on in Huntsville and around Huntsville. Of course, my concern is where I live in North Huntsville and as to what's going to happen over there. I'm especially pleased with what's going on with the building of Grissom High School and not only that, but how the city has got engaged, the board, uh, um, 
retail has come in and surrounded the city. Housing is being put in that location. It, it guarantees the longevity of this high school and its feeder system. Uh, on the other hand, in the north, the schools that are being built, uh, I'm told, are going to be wonderful schools, what, what have you. But I don't see any longevity. I still see the exodus of the peoples in the north going to the south for what is understood to be a better education for their children. No one can help that. But I just imagine that if the city got in gear and got behind the schools in the north, as they had behind Grissom, I think we will have a much better rounded city and education system. Uh, this, uh, unfortunately, the district, school district can't do it by themselves. It takes that model or model that the uh, city and school shown with Grissom. I applaud them down at Grissom. Also, um, I applaud the city for all you do and are doing for our homeless people. That warms my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kling, did you wish to address uh, something? Well, I wanted to ask if maybe the previous uh, speaker could, could announce where the warming shelters are so that uh, the work can kind of get out in the community and uh, you know perhaps assistance can be provided for transportation. Well, this um, weekend's warming center is going to be a Grateful Life. Right now, the Grateful Life Community Church is the only facility that we have for our individuals. Um, the goal right now is if we have families that are in need of shelters that we're going to have to sponsor hotel vouchers. We have not had a facility to step up to house the families um, currently. Thank you. Mr. Kling, we've also been informed downtown rescue mission will do as they typically do. They open up additional space uh, for folks that would not otherwise normally stay inside the downtown rescue mission. Thank you. If you don't mind. The Go downtown ahead. rescue mission is um, accommodating. Um, however, we are having a few issues with our homeless clients being able to go to the Salvation Army. Um, they have enacted a 90 day length of stay policy, um, which is subject to uh, to be renewed based on the client's progress. But um, the clients if it's 32 degrees and below, the clients are allowed to go to the Salvation Army if they've extended their 90 days, but at 40 degrees or anything uh, in between, they're not allowed to as they are as the Downtown Rescue Mission. Thank you. Sir, if you'll state your name and address for the record, please go ahead. All right. My name is Gregory Stargell, Dr. Gregory Stargell, uh, and my address is 117 Whitestone Drive. Welcome. Yes, I come before you all today for one is uh, pretty much piggybacking off of what Mr. Dr. Showers was saying in regards to the empty buildings in between Oakwood and M Max Luther. But I want to take it a, a bit further. My concern is the ones on Meridian Street. There's about five of them that are laid across when you drive down Meridian Street. And my question pretty much is, who do I contact to get information about those buildings so that we can acquire them and pretty much fix them up because it making our making our area look bad. And so we as a community want to take on the project to help better our community. And so that is my question. I tried going to the website and calling the community developers or whatever their the different div uh divisions are and all I keep getting is the runaround. They send me to one area and then I call them and they send me to another. So I'm coming here to see who is the person or division that I will speak to on this behalf. Mr. Hamilton? Yeah, if we could just link up right afterward, I'll, I'll talk to you about it. Okay. Sir, please go ahead. Eric Truett, once again, um, you all kind of cut me off earlier. I was waiting to see uh, if anyone had any comments in relation to my assertion that your ordinance regarding mobile homes is unconstitutional. I think we all know that the real purpose of the ordinance is, uh, is economic discrimination to keep low-income families from being able to own a home inside this city. So you are you asking us a question or uh, well do you have any any response to that? Uh, 
Uh, I think Mr. McGuffey said that it was some kind of design standard to keep mobile homes out of the city, and I don't know if that's exact words, but I assume that neighborhoods don't want mobile homes in their neighborhood. And un under what? Uh, uh, you're asking me. I wouldn't how would that be I don't know when the law was passed. I don't know. Well, I motion that this council uh, vote to repeal that ordinance. Uh, how could we go about that? Well, you getting a vote on this. If any council member wants to change any law, all they have to do is make a motion and, and we'll go through the system. So if a council member will sponsor uh, that, then that's what would happen. Will anyone sponsor this? Mr. Council Mr. members, it's just, we don't have to do this. If you want to, please go ahead. Yes, sir. I, <clears throat> I would like to know where you plan to put it um, if, if it involves you or if it's just something you're wanting to do generally, uh, is there a hardship of some kind? I mean, these are the questions that I, that I have regarding that. Well, sir, and, it, it and, does, in, and, well, it does I'm, involve. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Go ahead. And I would love to discuss that uh, more privately with you, if, if you don't mind. Yes, sir. Okay. Mr. President. Mr. Clayton. Uh, I'm not prepared to make any motion or, you know, sponsor anything but uh, there is a process uh, that we have to go through and it lets a person bring up a concern at the same time it protects uh, those who may be impacted by giving them a chance to have a you know a public process uh, there's the board of zoning adjustment uh, possibly there'd be some zoning uh, things in the planning department that'd be involved but uh, I think for us to do something up here spur of the moment uh, would not be a smart thing I don't know the process that they went through back in 1973, but I imagine it was probably very thorough. There were probably something conceivably was introduced. There was discussion at public meetings. There were recommendations from department heads, uh, and the public was given a chance to comment. And at the very least, if anybody were to do something, uh, probably the best process would be, you know, a department. Uh, taking this thing, uh, if Mr. McGuffey feels a change needs to be made, uh, he knows the process where uh, public hearings would be held, uh, you know, even before it got to the council. Or if a council member wanted to do something, you know, let the process work where the public gets a chance to uh, comment and this way something is looked at very thoroughly. Could be a good idea, maybe it's not such a good idea, but at least, uh, we go through an, a fair and equitable process for everybody. Well, sir, I, I was just wanting to, to know uh, how I could get that process started to get this reviewed and, and possibly get a vote on it at some future time. And like Mr. McGuffey has stated, I have been informed that there is a, a variant process, but I don't see why a citizen should have to be burdened uh, with applying for a variant in order to comply with an ordinance that's unconstitutional to begin with. Okay. Mr. Culver, you're going to get with the gentleman, yes, sir. and Mr. Hamilton's available as well. Yeah, I was going to. Mr. McGuffey is here, and he can explain in more detail some of that process and exactly what Mr. Kling is talking about in terms of of using the Planning Commission as it's designed to to consider those types of things and bring recommendations to the council on these types of matters. There are reasons why we have a variety of zones uh, that property owners have you know, have their property zoned into at times. And there's, you know, there's property that was zoned 50 years ago and it, and it uh, protects that property for certain uses and against certain uses and the property surrounds it. So there's there's good valid reasons for designing the city using a zoning process. Mr. McGuffey is available to explain that and also make sure that you're aware of uh, how you can seek a variance in your particular case. Uh, but also there's a process that the Planning Commission can undertake to make recommendations of those zoning ordinances. And Mr. McGuffey can explain that as well. Thank you, gentlemen. Yes, and Mr. President, Ms. Cole. if I could ask our city attorney, uh, Ms. Claudia, if I remember correctly, I believe that ordinance uh, does not deprive someone. In essence, it's not a uh, retroactive ordinance that caused all of the mobile home owners to have to move. I believe in its pertinent parts, it states that no new owners could purchase and put trailers in particular areas in the city limits, but not cause hardship on someone to cause them to move. Is that right? Um, Councilman uh, Culver, now that you've said that, that's my recollection. It sort of rings a bell, but also that the zoning ordinance has a grandfather provision. Exactly. So to the extent that there is some uh, existing legal use of the property, it is typically grandfathered in. Okay. 
Um, right. So it, it goes away over time, but there is a grandfathering provision. Okay, great. That's that's what I thought because I do have um, a trailer park in the district that uh, I represent, and it's still active. Just no new trailers or new owners are allowed to bring new trailers in there, or old trailers for that matter. Okay, thank you. Thanks, sir. Please state your name and address for the record. Um, I'm John Fisher. My address is 2509 Holmes Avenue. Um, I became a part of an investigation some 30 years ago that was designed to bring Congress' attention to some national security issues, corruption in the national security community. The Fourth Amendment to the Constitution of the United States forbids government to win certain types of litigation. I have had the um, experience of fighting a litigation that the city of Huntsville cannot win for seven years. Sir, are we, are you, we, Wait, we cannot well, talk about litigation against the okay, city of Huntsville okay, if it's all active. All right, all right. Well, well, let me okay, explain. So do it. not talk about let, it again. All right, okay. Well, this is the issue. You are the people that's now faced with the problem. You are faced with this problem because it is your responsibility to provide funding for the training, supervision of s departments of this city. And when a, a department of this city fails, it is your responsibility. Now this investigation intends to deal with you on this issue. We aren't going back to the courts because we know that there's a problem there. But you will be held responsible. You will be held criminally and civilly responsible for the results past this point. Does anyone else wish to address the council? Move to adjourn. We're adjourned.